Let us now learn some more new features while making the drawing of this assembly. In this drawing, we can see that an isometric view and an exploded view have been inserted. There is a bill of materials table also attached to the drawing. I will walk you through the steps to do this. First, I shall use the views command to place the model in the isometric view like so. Next, I will click on the start menu bar and select drafting workbench under mechanical design. I will select an empty sheet for automatic layout selection. I shall click on the modify button and change the sheet style to A0 ISO and then click on the OK buttons to exit each window. A new drawing sheet opens up. I will click on the isometric view command in the views toolbar and then switch back to the product window. I shall left click anywhere on the model and Katia will automatically bring the active view into the drawing sheet. The purpose of assembly drawing is mainly to view the structure of the product, its bill of materials and notes, if any, of the manufacturer. Remember, we created an exploded view using scenes in the assembly workbench. We will now bring that view into the drawing. To do this, I will first select the isometric view command from the views toolbar in the drawing window and then switch to the assembly model window here, I will expand the applications in the specification tree. Then expand the scenes option. I will change the view to front view. Next, I will click on the scene 1 and then click anywhere on the model. The exploded view is brought to the drawing. Bill of materials is a table that contains the product structure, listing all the sub-assemblies, components, raw materials, and each of their quantities. This table will help the manufacturer understand the production process and plan for inventory purchase. In the drawing, I can click on the insert menu bar, then click on generation and select the bill of material option. This action will insert a bill of materials table, including the list of all the part bodies adopted from the assembly specification tree. Observe all the columns in this table. This table is entirely customizable as per your requirement. Back in the assembly workbench, I will click on the analyze menu bar and click on the bill of material option. I can click on the define formats button here to add or remove the properties of each component that I want to be listed in the bill of material table. All the required properties for the part bodies can be defined in their respective properties definition window. For example, I can define source property of the cap in its properties window, whether it is made or bought. This source property can be added to the bill of material table columns. In the bill of material define formats window, I can add source property to the displayed properties and then be able to see the same column in the drawing. In the drawing window, once I generate a bill of material table again, we can see that the bill of material table is updated with a source column and the cap part shows as bot. I hope it was clear for you. A bill of material table may contain numerous sub-assemblies and components that are part of the assembly. In order to identify the parts in the drawing view with respect to those in the bomb table, we can add balloons to the drawing view. The balloons can be alphabetical or numerical symbols in the order of the listing in the bomb table. Let's see how to achieve this. First, I will go back to the assembly workbench. From the product structure tools toolbar, I will select the generate numbering command and then select the assembly name from the specification tree. A generate numbering definition window pops open. Here, I can choose between integer mode and letters mode. I will select the integer mode and click on OK. Let's go back to the drafting workbench. I will now click on the insert menu bar, then select generation and then select balloon generation. 
the software will carry over the balloons generated in the assembly workbench to the drawing as seen. The drawing is now completed. We shall wrap this exercise with this step and move on to the next exercise. For the caster wheel assembly design, we shall learn how the top-down approach is done. I shall walk you through designing the caster part bodies in the assembly workbench relative to each other. Let's get into the exercise. When I open a new session of Katia, you can see that a product window is started. Which means that we are in the assembly design workbench. You can confirm this by looking at the available tools bar like product structure tools, scenes etc. I will first rename the product 1 with caster wheel in its properties window. Next, I will save the file in a preferred location. Now, if you look at this picture, the caster consists of a top plate, two axle supports, one axle, two bushings and one wheel. We will have to create only one copy of certain part bodies like axle support even if there are multiple instances of the same component in the assembly. First, we shall design the top plate part body. You can see the sketch for this part on the screen. For this sketch, we need the profile, mirror and constraint sketch commands and for the model of the top plate, we will use pad, hole and edge fillet commands. Since you are well aware of the sketching and modeling process, I will make this step as quickly as possible. I shall first click on the insert menu bar and then select new part. Observe how at the bottom left corner a message is prompted. It says, select a component to insert the new part. So I will select the caster wheel. Let's rename this part to top plate in its properties window. I will double click on the part body under top plate to make it active and then start the sketch. I will add a point with X, Y and Z at 0 and then start a position sketch. Now, I will use the profile command from the profiles toolbar to draw the sketch as per the picture seen below. I will use the sketch tools toolbar above to apply dimensional constraints as I draw the profile. Once I complete drawing a fully defined sketch on one side, I will use the mirror command to replicate the profile on the other side of the V-direction axis. I will exit the sketcher like so and then click on the pad command. Let's update the length value to 41mm and check the mirrored extent option to add material on both sides of the sketch. Next, I will apply 12mm fillets on all four corners of this pad. Now, I will apply the whole operation in one corner. The whole type is up to next and the diameter is 11mm. I will position the whole sketch point at 12mm from the fillet edge in both horizontal and vertical directions as shown.
the whole command is complete. Once I click on OK. Now I shall use the mirror command from the transformation features toolbar twice and create a copy along YZ and XY planes each. At the fourth corner, I will have to create a separate whole command as it is not possible to create a copy of a mirror feature in Katia. Top plate design is now complete. I will save the model. Now let's move on to design the axle support model. Axle support as you can see is like an L-shaped angle with holes to connect to other objects. I will build the base first. Then extend the base to form the L-shape. And then add the holes accordingly. For this step, I shall first double click on the caster wheel in the specification tree to make it active. Next, I will click on the insert menu bar and then click on new part. I will rename this part as axle support in its properties window. Now, I will double click on part body of the axle support to start a sketch. I will click on this surface as shown and then select position sketch. I will now click on OK to exit this window. Without making any changes, I will use the Project 3D Elements command from the Operation Toolbar and apply this command to the edges and holes as shown. Now, I will draw three lines, like so, and apply a 38mm dimensional constraint between the top and bottom horizontal lines. I shall now apply the pad command of length 10mm to this sketch. Observe the direction in which I am adding the thickness. I shall use the 3D compass to move this part body aside to further build this model. Did you notice how I used the existing part body as reference to initiate the sketch for the current part body? Now, I will draw another sketch using the circle command and apply the pocket feature as shown. The circle radius is 10mm and pocket length is 3mm. Next, I shall start a sketch on this surface while aligning the V and H directions as shown.
I am using project 3D elements to create this line. Next, I will draw a 19mm radius circle while aligning its center with the V-direction axis. I will now draw two lines tangent to this circle and symmetric to each other along the V-direction axis. This circle is at 48 mm above the horizontal line. Lastly, I will trim the inner part of the circle to make this a closed sketch. Let's apply a pad of length 10 mm to this sketch. Now, on this pad, I will start another sketch of a circle as shown. I will apply a coincidence constraint between the edge of the previous pad and this circle. Next, I will apply a pad to this circle sketch of length 2mm. Moving on, I will start another sketch on the latest pad. I will draw a circle concentric to the previous pad and of radius 11 mm. I will apply a pocket command to make a hole. I will use the pocket type as up to last as seen. I will now apply fillets of radius 5mm to the sharp edges of this part. Please note the order in which I am selecting the edges. The axle support part body is now complete. Let's save the work done so far. You can see that the part bodies are also listed in the same folder where the assembly is saved. Katia saves the components also while saving the assembly.